Hello. Hi. This is Terrence Wilburn. Welcome to day four, the digital media specialist special. Uh, this is a master class on how to become a master at your craft. Um, day one, we kind of got familiar with FL Studio, <clears throat> some scratches, uh, scratch tracks we had. Day two began to understand the the causality. I want to use that word of why we do what we do. Day three we went through a little more in depth into concepts of tracks, and here in day four we're just going to continue that momentum all the way up until we reach 100 tracks. And here's why. <clears throat> um, me, Terrence Wilburn, I am a digital media specialist, and I am showing you how to reach your potential greatness. I'm going to remove this off the screen. I see this now, just out of the corner of my eye. But what I want to do is share with you the why I do what I do and how you can do potentially the same thing with your craft. See, it doesn't matter whether you're using... Um, I showed some tools earlier. Whether you're using something like the M32 or the machine or a uh, regular keyboard or any kind of other VST, soft sense, or even if you're using hardware, what I want to share with you is why you should put that stuff online and share it with the world. Because you see, the day of yesterday is gone, analog is gone. CD hardware um, is gone. Um, a lot of things which the world, no, no, a lot of things that were mm, used to produce and became well known for its production style are the things of yesterday. If you want to hold on to those things, I'm going to tell you straight up, you're going to have a hard problem of the rest of your career not meaning that um, it wouldn't have the potential to be used for something but I know a guy or should I say I am familiar with a guy from my past that he still likes to sell tapes and CDs bugs hey it's great for him it's not gonna bug the hell out of me okay um, he's still counting on um, someone to buy an old school mixtape. Who the hell wants to buy an old school mix mixtape? I found out that, and this kind of shocked me, and I want to say this before we begin today's um, lesson, is that I begin to notice as I started to travel the particular cars that were out, which are now I started to notice as I sat and drove some of these vehicles and witnessed some of them is that they do not even have CD players that the entire radio system you know you used to go and have the speakers put in there and the CD player put in there and the amp put in there that stuff is really gone it's, it's, the, it's the stuff of yesterday and what I mean by yesterday, yesteryear, and what I mean by yesteryear, a decade or two ago. And so my suggestion to you, especially black people, is that you need to get your stuff available online. One or two likes is better than no likes. Because nobody is buying your CD. Nobody's buying your mixtape. Nobody wants to buy your whatever it is. You have to get it available online for people to purchase and to share, to like, and build your fan base around that. So with that sermon said for today, this is why we do the master class. This is why you're here. This episode, this series, uh, hopefully it won't go too long, maybe five days, maybe less. This could be the last day potentially. But however, during this master class, you are encouraged to participate. I'm using here, I have a PC Dell um, workstation. This is a regular computer. It's beefed up, yeah, 
with super duper extras in there, but I didn't create it. Somebody else did. You know, I got it on a payment plan. It's mine. I purchased something that someone else did very hard work for. And here's why you should do the same is because you have ideas in your mind. You have ideas in your heart in your body, soul and spirit. God created you for a particular reason. What is that reason? Are you a singer? Are you a rapper? Are you an entertainer? Are you a producer? Are you a professional? Do you create videos? Do you create audio? What is your specialty? You're here today because of that, not for any other reason. And simply because of that, um, you trusted me with your name, your email, your, um, your time, your like, your share, your subscriber. Uh, you're here simply because of that. You are a potential master. See, this is not for the masses. It's not for a million shares and a million likes. It's not for 10 million shares and a million likes. Hey, that's great if it gets shared around the world. That's awesome. But I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Cantonese. I don't speak uh, Spanish for that matter. So I'm speaking to a particular type of person, and it's you. And it, there aren't many masters around. But I expect for there to be thousands of masters who will watch this video, who will like this video, who will comment on this video, who will share this video with someone they know who needs a little bit of encouragement, someone who needs some guidance, someone who needs understanding, someone who can be there for you at your lowest point in time of need. And so that's why you're here today is to watch day four of the digital specialist, digital media specialist masterclass. And that's what you're becoming on your journey to create that book, create that soundtrack, create that movie, create that video, create that uh, subscriber list. You want to know how to get your stuff out and to be here uh, present um, while we finish the class. So today we're still dealing with audio. And I want to share with you 100 tracks. The reason why 100 tracks is I call the series 1 to 100. That means that you followed me from zero all the way to 100 of some of the best work I've created in the last few months, few weeks, and possibly even the last couple of years. This is my life work. And what I mean by that is I don't heavily invest myself and my life into all I create anymore. I take all of what I have become all of my time, all of my patience, all of my experience, all of my learning, all of my discovery, and I throw it into the song just so you can get an understanding of what you should be doing daily, monthly, hourly, weekly, that saves you time anytime you open up your DAW, anytime you open up your, um, your whatever you're using, okay? Today, like I said, we're still dealing with audio, and I call this series 1 to 100. It's 100 of my free tracks given to you for you to use for your background music, for your YouTube videos, for your soundtrack, for your new song, for whatever you're doing. And so um, what I'm doing is basically sharing with you how I got these ideas, just scratch ideas off out of the blue, right out of the spirit world, into this location, which we call FL Studio right now, and how we're going to use this to further that into uh, other ideas that you could use, you could, uh, artists can use, that uh, a director could use, a producer could use, anyone who is readily and able and, and, and um, open to use this sound. And so I want to share with you, like I said, how you can do the same and that's why you're watching today's video so let's continue right now <clears throat> okay on day three we dealt with the range of 60 track 60 all the way up to track 69 which equals just about 10 tracks. <clears throat> Again, I'm not a Perrier affiliate, but you guys want to holler at me, holler at me, okay? But always keep something that refreshes you. And so here, 
right here right away you see we already have an issue with the plug-in so addictive keys if you've been following me day one day two day three we had problems out of several uh, plugins one was addictive keys the second was halftime and so as we stated in other videos as we will do right now very shortly is that when you have these problems uh, you can do two things you can rediscover why it happened but if you're like me and you're ready to get forward and get moving and it's not that serious click OK or cancel and move on to the next thing so as it loads here in the screen <clears throat> you want to get ready for all the things that you're getting ready to do so I'm gonna to shift to all I wanna make sure all of my samples are here in the channel rack this is not an FL studio tutorial as I always start these tutorials uh, for the master classes that if you're looking for FL studio tutorial this is not your video click to the next guy check out some stuff he's trying to show you this is for masters only this is not for kids This is not a kids video we're not joking and playing around here hopefully we can have some fun but we're dead serious this video is for masters only so I'm again just a, di a sudden disclaimer all of a sudden if you feel like this is not for you get the hell out of here we're not looking for you over here in master view okay go over there and check out some cat videos and have a life get a life should I say so as we were saying in day one day two day three as we advance through the 100 tracks they will become more um, complicated um, I want to use this phrase as I will continue to use this phrase throughout the master series Beethoven said oftentimes genius is found in simplicity so as we progress through these tracks and we're starting here today in day four track 70 through let's say let's try to get to 82 and then we'll go get into some of the broken down songs which will probably equal 100 tracks if we make it through it today but we're dealing mainly with these 10 tracks uh set maybe we'll stop at 82 um these tracks because as i've said i intentionally i made these tracks over a period of time which are about 10 at a time, whether they were days or weeks, however long it took me to create all this stuff. I don't keep up with that anymore, simply because uh, I'm looking for a particular sound. I'm creating a sound. I'm shifting a sound. I'm figuring out what it is I like, what it is I don't like, what sounds good to my ears, what doesn't sound good to your ears. And so I'm coming at that from a mastery perspective. And so a lot of times when you do that within your DAW, within your DAW, I'm sorry, I'm shaking the table here, so you might see me kind of fluttering. <clears throat> when you start to do things like that, you'll find out that your samples are missing, that your VSTs have been moving. And as we progress through these tracks, you'll find them more filled in. Um, as I've stated, I like to track mines out between 32 and 64 bars, depending on the speed, tempo, and genre. That's particularly because I track my tracks out basically radio style when the chorus shows up when the verse shows up when the hook is there when the pre-chorus etc 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 at infinitum and so I do that because I grew up in the 80s I was used to the DJs cutting their records a certain way breaking their records a certain way an artist jumping on a track a certain way all things were brand new being used and it came to a certain sound and a certain format which we use today in which I follow and which a lot of things on the radio still follow but I break mines down in a certain way I don't use FL studio with all the colors and everything like that I just use it to get a basic bare-bone track of what I should be uh, doing with my music and then I take it and expose it to something like a Pro Tools expose it to something like a, a logic and then the artist begins to record and then from there we can begin to add all kinds of uh, crazy stuff that really makes the track go big big and big as my daughter would say and so here we're gonna press play and we're gonna do a little less talking today and more action and what I mean by that is follow me if you watch day two I mean day one day two and day three you understand that certain plugins I use certain ones I don't specifically because we're trying to get these 100 tracks out to you the general public at a certain sound certain frequency certain rate and all of that is very spiritual so that's my sermonette for the day and as we start here I'm gonna check my mastering chain I already have two pre 
set effects I'm not gonna bother it much I usually would throw the 670 on there if you're just jumping into the the master class I advise you to go back watch day one day two and day three because this is day four and usually we would throw a puke child or puke tech whatever it's called 670 on there I'm not gonna do that today because it's already looking like I use some stuff to make it sound great so let me just check and see if they're all ready to go they are ready to go I'm gonna check my instantiations for this thing here called halftime which I do not recommend you using now there's a way that if a plug-in crashes like that I'm familiar with how to get that sound out of here if I just had to have that sound but I don't have to have that sound I'm gonna recommend that you take plugins like this throw them away simply because you could use any kind of stock plug-in you could play with the pitch you can really make it sound however you want it to sound it does come in handy but again I don't need this plug-in within what we're doing because first of all it was crashing my tracks meaning that as I exported some of the sound we realized soon that the halftime plug-in was causing some kind of frequency distortion within my um, FL Studio now if you've used FL Studio in the past again disclaimer this is not an FL Studio tutorial but if you use it in the past you are familiar with this many buggy versions and it does crash it does have a lot of problems and so what we want to do is jump right here into the track press play see how it sounds I doubt that we will need very much we will probably get through today's tracks very very quickly and let's just see what we have so again anytime you're producing you're getting the production style out listen to a, a first a few uh, seconds of what you're dealing with adjust your ears to the room I have uh, Behringer or Behringer speakers on the desk as well as a subwoofer under my desk that you cannot see it's booming loud in here so as I adjust you may see my right hand adjust like this under the table where I have a scarlet interface and I'm turning stuff up and I'm turning stuff down right now as you hear it I do not hear it like that it's super loud in here so I'm turning things down and it's already at a moderate um, volume so I'm just turning it down a little further and so I said that to say as you progress within your uh, mastery skills you might want to adjust your ears your room volume I have a fan in the background I'm gonna try to get that noise out of there later on uh, because it causes distortion or noise on the microphone and pretty much that's what we're doing today is adjusting to the room this is not a playroom this is a workroom yes there are some things in the background I keep them there on purpose to show you that that I am a father I am a husband I have a family this is not my family room although I allow my kids to come in here and hang out sometime I allow guests to come in here sometime and hang out maybe I'll do a 360 pan one day and you can check it out in here but pretty much I want you to feel comfortable psychologically with what you are doing that you don't have to be in the grand room doing the grand thing like these guys are showing you you could be right at home like I am doing your own thing professionally like I do So it looks like just the basic track all the way through. Other than the sam sample being missing with the addictive key. So what I'm going to do is, since I'm already familiar with what kind of plugins to use to back that up, I'm going to go with the Purity, something very CPU less intensive. I'm just going to throw a plain piano on there without changing the presets to see how it sounds. If it does not sound like something I would want to use, then I would change the plugin, change the preset, or tweak it to make it fit this particular playset. Let's hear how it sounds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use that, but I want to make one identification that two things were going on here. One, this is how it sounds with the halftime plugin. Two, is this is how it sounds without the halftime plugin. This is why, because gross beat is on there and it takes a little 
snippet in and out of the track and I'm gonna play it for you back so you can check it out I advise using this plugin over halftime if you can so it makes it sound like it's played like that but it's actually not this is how the original sample sounds Now that's what I originally played, but again with the gross beat and halftime and made it sound something so totally different, which is what the original sample sounded like this, uh, sounded like that, but this is the B sample. So anyway, it gave it some flavor. So again, we're not going to use the halftime because it was causing extra distortion uh, for the entire track. I'm, I'm going to check the rest of the tracks to make sure there are no more instantiations of it on here. And what we're going to do is basically just widen this track out here. I'll do a couple of adjustments for the drums and then we'll bounce this down. We're finished with it already. And so that's pretty much it. Once you reach a certain point in time in your um, production, I'm going to save that, you're going to figure out that it's basically the same thing over and over again. We've reached that point on here on day four where we understand what we're doing. I'm going to lock it into here to my favorite folders, which is 100 beats. That's the folder we're using. This is track number 70. We're going to bounce it down using all of the same presets I'm not touching anything that's one great thing about FL Studio they do save your presets that and logic it's pretty much the only thing I use uh, but anyhow FL Studio will save that pretty much indefinitely for as long as you use it and do not reset it and so it's pretty much easy to continue to use the same thing over and over again only thing I would do is take this upload it on a track excuse me on an artist records for his engineer or his quote-unquote producer asks for the stem files I would just go here and click wave or you would go here should I say and click wave save it under whatever you want to save it under wave and I would suggest dumping the MIDI in there as well and zipping the package and then sending it off and what it will do it will export not only just one master file it'll do each track that you have on here uh, tracked out so I only have three tracks, so it'll send three master individual tracks on there. Or we could go back into it and break it down long style, you know, however the engineer said that they want, they're requesting the stem files. So anyway, that's the business on that. Let's move on to track number 71. Today I will be taking a lot more water in because I've been speaking a lot. And <clears throat> we want to make sure that I'm taking care of me. Okay, so again, <clears throat> never be ashamed to use off-brand plugins. Like, <clears throat> I found this stuff, again, I mentioned this in like day two, day three, or something like that. You find some of the greatest plugins uh, where you least expect it. This is a plugin I found um, from a Behringer interface I had. I bought it on eBay, not eBay, uh, Amazon, like 29 bucks when it came. I think it's like $159 now, something like that. It's up there. But it's a pretty good one. 
it came with like all of this software and like hundreds and hundreds of plugins that I never used. They stayed around literally for about five, no, four years. Yeah, probably about five years. And so uh, I said, let me open it up. I installed a bunch of them. And then this was one I just decided to use on this track. I do not know how this track sounds. I got a lot of stuff muted out here apparently, but it is all the way tracked out how I wanted it. And we'll see what these one, two, four, five, six tracks sound like if they are to be played. So let's just, again, make sure we're using all of our samples, make sure they're all tracked out, make sure we're, because we're using Serato uh, sampler as a sampler, we're, then we'll take over here. Ooh, excuse me. We're on the mastering chain effect. I'm going to turn off the limiter as I have in day one, day two, and day three. I'm going to add the 670. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to add the Drew Levine. Levine Vintage Mastering Glue. I have no idea what that is. All I know is this is a mastering effect from Waves, and I like that preset. So I wanted to have a certain type of sound for my sound, and so I discovered this. And that's all I'm saying. You do the same thing. Just mimic what I do. The third thing I'm going to do is that we've been doing in all of the songs since we found out about halftime causing a problem. I'm going to check for halftime, which I already see it here at the top. I'll play and see how it sounds, see if it's necessarily to recreate the sound. If not, we'll drop it. Let's go on from 6 all the way through. Here again, I found one on 17. I don't know what's linked to 17. I don't see it linked to anything except for the master, so I was probably using that as a playback. I'm going to delete it. Or should I say I'm going to disenable, disengage it? Wait, wait. Let me just see. Let me disengage it here first because I could be messing something up I had somewhere else. And so anyway, I usually stop at about 16, 17, so I know I don't never use that stuff over here. Um, it's just it can, creates chaos is why I don't do that. Um, and so again, I see one. I just want to play and see how it sounds first, and let's play it. Okay, as you can see, let me put my water down here, okay? <clears throat> as you can see, that did cause a major um, kink in the audio concerning the melody. So let's just say the melody came from here. Let's see it checks the chord. Uh, let's see. What, what's this? Now that looks like the beat. Score number two. Yeah. So this is how it sounds with the halftime. And without it. So anyway, what I would probably do, there's already a gross beat on there for an effect. So let's just see if I can add one to mimic the, um, the halftime. I'll add close to four. This is a preset I already made. Okay, we'll check out another preset. Uh, we got to go into patterns, pitch shifter. Pitch shifter, take it down a quarter. Take it down further. Uh, it's very small. Take it up. Up. Close. That's close.
I'm going to go ahead and use that. Now, I know you may be thinking, well, it doesn't sound like halftime. Again, two things. One, I know how to take it off there if I really, really wanted it. Two is, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to see if it's necessary to keep halftime on there as a sound. Sometimes you cannot recreate things that you did on the spur of the moment. Two, two, thing, two other things. One, like I said, I know how to get it off there if I really, really want it. I don't really, really want it, which was the part of number two. I said that if it's really, really necessary, it's not necessary. You can, of course, I'll just let you know, you can bounce that sound in place, which that means it'll, it'll create a wave file right here, which sounds exactly like halftime. You can bounce it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're not doing that. I care nothing for it because the artist who will hear that song will never know it was on there in the first place. Secondly, if they did choose that sound, that's something that they can create again in post-production. So again, you're thinking mastery when you're dealing with your digital files. You're not thinking like chumps. You're not thinking like an average person. You're not thinking like a novice. You're thinking like a master. And this is the master class. Yep, so that was like a total different beat. And so what I did is snatch that audio out of there, created a second beat over top of that. Don't really feel like dealing with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to this. And that's how it pays to do your pre-work. You know, this is already done. It looks like I created a whole bunch of stuff, snatched it, the audio out of one, two, four, five, and six, created an entire different feel. And so once you get a feel for doing stuff like that, you know what you like, you know what the artist, or excuse me, the genre that you deal with uses, you'll find that you'll get the vocals from an, art, from an art, artist, is what I'm trying to say, and then you'll create an entire different track. So we're going to bounce that down just like it is. Like I said, we're hoping to get through 70 through 82 today very quickly. As we progress, this course will become increasingly easier to understand as we go through the days. Uh, again, we don't want it to really be more than five days long. But in this particular set of the course, we're dealing with audio and as well as there will be aspects about media uh, video as well as information and that's in the other part of the course again this is a the audio version I'm gonna save that follow what I'm saying if you miss day one day two and day three I suggest really that you go back and watch those days I'm not gonna re this is not a remedial course I'm not going back and covering any of that stuff uh, post video I fixed several of the tracks uh, so we won't be covering that in the production uh, courses except for the ones that I highlighted right here on my paper see this pen right here on the paper that I want to take uh, an advantage to show you about alright so I already see now what I'm dealing with again this is track 72 I'm doing two things Pulling up my mixer. As you see here, it's called the mixer. Oh man, I almost cut myself on the end of that keyboard. So, anyway, going over here to the tuner, taking off the fruity limiter. I'm putting on the 670 by Waves. I'm going here to my preset, mastering glue. I'm closing that out. I'm checking track 1 through 17 for the halftime plugin. Doesn't look like I have any plugins on here except for what? Halftime. Caught it again taking it off going back over here um, looks like I already had a couple of different things happening so I'm gonna sh shift select these three tracks which have nothing on it. I'm gonna press control L boom it shows up here in my timeline on the mixer what that meant is that I'm making sure all of my samples make it into my post-production with effects otherwise if you don't do something like that if you're not aware this is something I rarely never use. I don't think I've paid attention to a tool right now. Um, the point is this, is that you want to make sure all of your 
samples reach it to the mixer otherwise you're going to have an issue post-production all right so again i got a sub over here it's jamming hard room is vibrating um i'm going to use the supercharger this is native instruments plug in i just happened to find this thing i knew exactly what it was when i saw it I'm going to keep it about right there, then I'm going to drop it like six decibels. You can look here sometime and tell you what it is, but I just know it by sound. Because it's very overbearing. I got it switched all the way into mono. This is how it sounds in stereo. This is how it sounds in mono. You can't hear much of a difference, but trust me, it will make a difference with these other files particularly like a kick. I'm going to switch this kick back over to stereo. This, the reason why is because of phasing issues. Phasing is not really a huge issue for most digital things, uh, but it can cause a problem in your mix. So you have, you have to become aware of what phasing is and how it sounds in your room. And it already shows you the shape of the kick. I like to see my sound. Um, I know a lot of people have been debating about that. Don't ever get into debates about what people are saying. Use this. Don't use that. This is too much. This is too cheap. This is the best. This is not, no. Forget about all that stuff. Do what feels good and uh, how your gift works. My gift works visually and auditory. I feel it. I can see it. I can sense it. So this is a spiritual thing, this is a spiritual work. Number one, audio is an art form. Number two, it is a science. But wholly, this is the matter, it is a spiritual art. And so you must learn how to work your spiritual gift in order to work that spiritual art and science. Because the track is so raw, I don't want to put a lot of effects on here. I'm pretty much just Adjust, making adjustments then I'm gonna squash it like that uh, so it won't get too much out of control and that's what you're following me doing right now okay these two kicks might conflict but I don't care Let's, I'll leave that as a bottom kick that was a top kick that's the way we'll work that
I'm gonna leave that exactly like that. Now I can feel that bass conflicting with that a lot. I really don't care. Here's why. Like I said, once you feel an artist must feel the track. They don't know anything about mixing, mastering, all this other stuff. They rarely do. Uh, particularly because that's if they're a great artist. Um, because they're so focused in their craft, they just want it to feel good, sound good. And a lot of times you'll find the best stuff sounds very raw. And I'm going to keep that exactly like it is. It's just 16 bars. Um, matter of fact, let's link it out to 32 bars. Let's, let's just be fair to somebody else who might say, hey, that's too short for me. You know, let's, let's rock it. So I'm going I'm to take it out to 32. I'm not going to change anything about it because I just simply don't know how and who would come at that. I could hear a bust of rhymes on something like that. You know what I mean? So a lot of times tracks are just done by little phrases, little things that artists do, and you build it out as you go. And so that's the secret to production. It's not all done in one place in one day by one person. However, this teaches you to do so just in case you ever have to do things like that. As, it, as technology progresses, and it, right now it's kind of leveled out in a certain way, this has made it open for us to do what we need to do and use our God-given gifts to share with the world to make it a better place. So again, back again here, we're here. We're going to do the same thing, checking all. The reason why I check all is because, as I said, sometimes as I progress in my tracks, I start to add pages uh, of things and I'll confuse myself about where the samples are. So we want to make sure all the samples are present on the first page, all are tracked out um, to the mixer. If I didn't press Control L, you don't see it here. I, oftentimes I'll just say one, two, three, four, five by myself. If I press Control L, you see all the names here. They're not here. So I'm going to go over here to the master chain, limiter, 670. You guessed it, mastering glue, exit, oops. I don't need a plug in. Uh, thing right now so anyway um 670 mastering glue checking for halftime right there it's already doled out or whatever whatever let's hear what we got So again, I can hear a bust of rhymes on something like that. It's a hit style song, something like a Sean Paul, you know, bust of rhymes, that type of feel. You may even catch, um, if you get the right type of fit vibe on it, uh, I want to say a Beyonce. But anyhow, I do hear bust of rhymes on that. So let's just bounce it down as it is. We're going to widen the track up a little bit. That's all. Make slight changes, maybe to the drums. I'll listen to it one more time. I'll put the supercharger back on there just to squeeze it a little bit harder.
again, if you're wondering what plugin I'm using, that's Sakura. Like I said, this is an ill, crazy thing. So figure it out. You have yourself a great plugin. I'm going to go ahead and mix, uh, not mix it, excuse me, bounce that down to the 100 beats folder. Same thing, MP3. It's 28 bars. I'm not going to tra track it out any further than that. It's just getting ready for the chorus. I wouldn't even touch that unless a rapper or a singer or somebody ill got on it and uh, showed me what they got. That's the only way you could kind of build around that is to really by at that point taking stuff out. Um, and so that's the secret to a track like that. It's a big sounding track. It's a mega sounding hit track. And so you want to think about that when you're dealing with your artists. You don't want to add much. You want to subtract a whole lot more. Remember Beethoven, the um, some geniuses in simplicity. Again, you notice the pattern. All samples. Serato's not being used, likely. That's why it's blanked out right here. And it's not. If you click it, you'll see a file right there. Again, we're back over here on the mixer, turning off this limiter, putting on the 670. We're masters here. We understand what's going on. If you didn't, like I said, go back and watch day one through three. Otherwise, I'm not doing any remedial, remedial stuff. This is not special education. Okay, so uh, we're back here in the media, the mixer file. We're magnetizing it. We're looking for, of course, halftime. Turning it off. You may say, hey, why are you doing that? Because I used a lot of halftime on track 60s through 82 and probably more. But as we see with some kind of update, I've done several updates, several plug-in uh, things, several things went crashed. So it's likely a problem where I can just uninstall, reinstall it. But I don't feel like doing that. I really feel like that if I super definitely duper need it, like a guy says, hey, man, you just got to have that halftime on it before I buy that track, then I may do it after I get a deposit, okay? So anyway, that's going to be loud, as you can tell. What I'm going to do now is find out where it's coming from. My subwoofer over here is kicking. I'm just going to go down the road. Okay, so it looks like Omnisphere has the loudest, stupidest sound on it, right? And sometimes you got to get stupid with it. It's froze right now, and we talked about that in day three. The more, the longer you wait to open your track back up, it'll freeze because it needs to find out where that sound came from. And I'm moving a lot of stuff around on my computer, so it's hard to find, probably. I'm going to turn the... Um, Omnisphere down. I don't know what that was. I'm going to turn this the Bay 808 down and then we'll see how it sounds. Still very loud. I can tell as well with the speed is going super duper fast. Look here at 210. The trick is to click half speed and let's go right back into it. wondering is why is it let me mute all the stuff I'm saying because bells don't have hi-hats in them right so anyway it must be this Maserati drum thing I got right here on here so you have to know where your sound is coming from what it's gonna sound like so I'm gonna cut like half of that down and if I'm gonna squash it I hate to do that to your Omnisphere, but you were very loud on my track, so I'm going to just kind of, that'll work for me. I deal with this kick. Again, I'm using the same plugins over and over again, Supercharger, pretty much like a distressor or compressor.
that works for me as well. What's on track two? I had sound good. I was just throwing a little reverb on that. As you progress, you'll see your samples get better and better and better. I'm looking for an FL reverb. That's almost perfect. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Yep, that is perfect. That's perfect. So track three. Wet clap. I'm going to crank that up to the max. I'm going to throw another reverb on it. I'll show you the effect I put on there real quick. You might be asking yourself, why is it gross beat on there if you caught that? Okay, here's why the gross beat is on there. It's causing a clap delay. It's like a flutter effect. That's without it. This is with it on it. And it has like a little drag at the end for the pitch, the pitch. So it says and it kind of drags the pitch at the end. Find out to do little stuff like that. When you're not working with a hardware beat machine, it's kind of hard to get samples out of your head without understanding um, some of the effects of things like gross beat. That will come in handy that you would do with uh, something like an NPC, but it's all internal. You got your knobs right here and you're playing with stuff. You got the same thing right here inside of the gross beat and different other effects you could use. Okay, that kick is real hard. I'm going to do the same thing for that that I did with the bass. Throw the supercharge on it. I'll see if they have any good kick, fat kick. Let's try the fat kick. Oh, that's hardcore, man. Come on. I'm not going to even touch that. I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. Is that my kick? Yes, yeah, that's, that's it. I'm going to turn it down a little more. I'm going to turn the bass up a little bit more. Let's see what happens when I widen the track. Now I'm going to turn down the clap a little bit. I also hear a filter on that. so. I'm going to use this one knob filter by Waves. Dull the clap out a little more. leave it just like that save go over here to export mp3 go to the favorites folder 100 beats start my bounce down it's already tracked out for an artist to jump on again if you're interested in that track track check the description below you will find the playlist uh, for 1 to 100 over there on SoundCloud or if you're watching this at a later date somewhere else We are riding. Seventy five, let's go.
Okay, I'm gonna go here for my monitor. I got a monitor above my monitor, so you'll see me looking here. I'm looking up at my second uh, Hubble monitor. Which is, I think it's a 55 inch or something like that. Okay, so again, you gotta change some of your settings sometimes. Uh, this is the half speed on here. So I took it off. And again, as you see, we got another kind of page going on, which is why I said as you progress, or as I progress, we're gonna press all, make sure we're on the same page. I'm gonna unmute whatever this is with the Omnisphere. I clicked it. We got a freeze going on right now, so I'm gonna let that come. <laughs> Excuse me. Come together as we're talking. It's still there. It goes right there. I'm gonna see how it sounds. It sounds like a string. I don't think I use that, so I'm gonna probably just mute it out if I didn't use it. Pattern. I'm looking for it here in the pattern. Actually, I did use it. So okay. Anyway, um, we're back over here. I'm not gonna track this out any further than what it is other than to well I may track it out some I'm gonna duplicate it once and then again twice because I already know what this is this is gonna be a heavy trap sound and rap sound um, you can use it for anything I guess but I'm just letting you know uh, Mm, let's let's stop right there and see what we can get out of that. Play the first part. Okay, before we do that, we're gonna do the same thing. Take off our FL limiter, put on the 670. Back over here at the Drew Levine. Closing it out, looking for what halftime is right. Closing out the halftime. On the master chain, going a little slower just to make sure I'm, I'm looking at it right. I don't see it there. I don't see it there. Since it's so overpowering, I'm going to see if I can mute out one of these. Let me see how this one sounds. That's a main sample. Can't hear what in the world that is. I'm going to delete it all throughout. So anyway, I'm going to, I was looking at the mastering chain, that's a minute and five seconds. I'll go right back into like a pre-bridge, pre-chorus, something like that, and I'll just let it fade out. That's what that track is. It looks like it's already mixed, mostly, so I won't bother it a lot, other than to say, let's see how it sounds widened. widen it. 
I'm gonna widen it. I'm picking up all kind of other stuff, but I'm gonna widen it. So it's track 75, 24 bars, let's go. That's easily a verse and a hook. All right? Easily. If you can't do something with that, I don't know what's wrong with you. All right, so track two, I think I added like a yeah, save changes. So we got a bunch of stuff on version two. Maybe I changed some of the sounds. I don't really know. It could sound exactly the same. I think one time I messed up something and I had to make sure I saved it all or something weird like that. So let's just see how track version two sounds. It looks almost identical to the one we just bounced down. So I can tell I already uh, changed some of the synth. So we're going to bounce down both versions. How about that? This is already done. We're just going to add the Pugue Child 670. Drew, Drew L. See how it sounds? That's the only reason why I stopped that I noticed that this was not on a channel. So I don't want to mix this because I don't want to mess with the mix. I'm going to easily throw it on track 10. I'm going to quiet it down some. I'm going to throw a one knob filter on it. Push it further in the background. I don't care what you say that version harder than the first one all right so what we're gonna do is save it go ahead and export it to mp3 hopefully I didn't miss a halftime somewhere that's version point two sounds a lot harder than the first one so apparently I went over there and did some other stuff with the synth looks like I changed it the uh, omnisphere for a massive X string uh, massive uh, sorry not massive X that looked like the old massive uh, which is still a killer, but you know, it's a killer sound, you know, you gotta get used to it. Let's see. Yeah, that's regular massive, not massive X. So I don't even want to know what I did with this other stuff. It's not important. I'll pull that up when the artist says, hey, I want that track. number 76 and we are smoking all right so again as you already see halftime is right there we'll always play with it to see how it sounded if it's necessary if it, i'm talking about it has to be super necessary like if i changed it the entire track would change that's the only way i would like do what i know how to do on it which would cost only seconds but it's faster in programs like logic to bounce something down. I remember this one in particular because it had a problem with zooming. There was some kind of error on that. I couldn't zoom in quite far out enough. So that's why you see it here kind of frozen. But let's see how it sounds. First of all, I want to check two things. Sort it all. And as you see, a bunch of stuff is missing from 
the mixer. We're going to highlight it. And Serato is being used. That's very important. Now I got to put my water up. I want to make sure Serato is on version. I'm at track two so I can keep up with it. I usually like to keep it on track one because it'll be the main ingredient. I'm selecting the rest of this stuff on all the pages. Control L. As you see, it all populated here all the way up until track 13. I'm going to check 17, which I know probably has a halftime on it. I'm going to check the rest of these, which shouldn't have a halftime on it. Well, actually, uh, version 8 does, which is Sakura. We can check that out now, see how it sounds. All right, so again, the gross beat was already on there, so I'm going to keep it without the halftime. Um, I understand that gave it a vibe, but forget about it. Gross beat. All right, turning off the limiter, putting on the puke, child 670, putting on the DL vintage mastering glue. I'm playing it from the top. I'm talking about the very top. I don't even want to hear that part right there. Now I know what it is. I highlighted that for one specific reason that I knew that this track was not finished. I needed some other kind of flair. I'm going to see if I can go against my better judgment and see if I can just sneak without mixing or doing anything else to this track. Let's play it from the top. That's why I want to hit from the, the top. They call it top number one all the way through track 22 which is getting ready to go into a pre-chorus. So let's let's see if I can trick myself. He asked me that I trick myself. The answer is no. I'm gonna pass on it anyway. Of course, I hear a filter on that. I would just put a filter on it anyway. I'm just gonna add one after the fact. Let's give it that old timey vibe. I want to see what kind of sample this was I was using though. I don't hear it, which is strange, like I said, uh, because there's MIDI data on there, but it's not being used, which could mean two things. I probably missed the point of what I was trying to do. And so I'm gonna mute this. It's on a track though. No, I just did that, I'm sorry. So um, I don't hear anything on there. I got track one muted because I was going to probably add something to this. Let's see how the track one sound. <clears throat> totally understand. I love from time to time the Asian flair. I'm going to miss it this time intentionally.
did I not just recreate that with this, the, the gross beat? <clears throat> Here's with the halftime on it. It's on the Sakura. Uh, let's go to the Sakura. Let's just solo it out. That's what running through the halftime, as you see here. Go over here to Gross Beat, turned it on to, um, I think it's Pitch Shifter, negative five. Exact same sound. If it's any kind of nuances, I don't hear it, doesn't even matter. So it kind of throws it back on vibe. Press something that was uh. See what I pressed. feel like looking through that something I touch here on the keyboard if it was logic I could easily find that that's another thing I don't care for about FL studio um, undos they really don't undo what you last did they kind of focus on here and inside of these parts not here so I pressed something because I felt myself press the press the keyboard accidentally and apparently it threw some kind of phasing on to the sample. Because it's not heard here, but it's heard here on the playlist. You see? a shame and so let's just see if we can save it reopen it see if that'll save the track go back over here and it didn't save it now two ways you can save that one, like I said, you can bounce down the original sound. Um, I'm just going to say, so what? Oh well, oh hell. Um, and move on. Okay, how about that? So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and track this out. Well, excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and bounce it down. Um, here, I don't see any halftime enabled. And I'm going to go ahead and bounce that down. I'm going to try to get away without mixing it. Sometimes stuff is just sounds the good the way it is. It's rough. And it needs to... Ooh, we definitely don't want 5,000... 55,000 minutes, so... And that's why I say there's an error on this track some kind of way, which caused that phasing issue, which is why we save 
and we go ahead and bounce down what we can have without tearing up anything else and that way we don't lose what we're trying to create because if we knew if we had to get that stuff we knew what we had to do we press oops I still press that button hold on one second go over here to my files and close up all the stuff open it up again <clears throat> On these folder, I don't see anything in there. But uh, what we typically wouldn't do, yep, we want to part, replace that. I'm gonna take off split next. Yeah, we don't want to split the tracks. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and bounce it down. MP3. I'm just checking my stuff visually, just make sure everything is the same. It looks the same, with the one exception. Uh, which was, you know, like I said, if you really had to keep that sound, if it's causing an issue, if it's really trying to take 16 days to bounce down, you would just make sudden adjustments. That's all I'm saying. And so anyway, we're on to track number 77. We're flying through day four. As I said previously, we're going to save the changes. I don't really know what I did to, check, to change the track, but we have. <clears throat> and that's mostly because we've already done a lot of pre-work with these tracks going all again as you see certain pages were hidden they're probably not being used I'm just going to go ahead and track them out anyway checking the Serato not being used also going over here to my master chain uh, mixer, master mixer muting out the FL studio limiter this is a tuner I, like I said not, it's not causing any you know background feedback that I know of um, so I'm keeping that on don't really care about it going here to the PC 670 going down here to Drew Levine mastering blue exiting that out now I'm checking 1 through 17 for the halftime plug-in I'm disabling it going back down checking to see whatever the tracks have it on there I get confused with that hardcore and halftime sometimes so I have to double check and looks good You're probably asking yourself why I got halftime way out here it's typically for a playback you know um, sometime I'll route the effects here going into 17 without adding a bunch of tracks so it just kind of tip is like a test and I already tell you this track is not mixed it's not even attempted to be well I ain't gonna say attempted it looks like I attempted to mix it I was gonna submit this beat to uh, a beat maker um, I don't want to say no names just simply because I don't, you know, not that I care about his feelings or anything like that. I don't want him to think that I'm trying to undercut him. So I didn't submit the track, even though I said I would submit the track. But why the hell would I want to do that? So anyway, I just said I'll use it on my own platform. And that's what I'm doing here. But that beat maker is a YouTube. I won't say his name, but he's a black guy. Thank you. 
I'm going to keep this track like it is. Uh, you can call it Lucky 77. <clears throat> so anyway, same thing. It's already pre-mixed. Honeybees folder, 40 bars apparently. Uh, we're right up on a chorus. So as you see, depending on the speed, it doesn't really matter about how many bars you have or anything like that because it's at 40 bars, but the, the tempo is like 210, 209, and so it happens very fast. On the track 78, we flash through here like a flash, just like I said. We may get into 82 before we get into the special tracks, which I have named for whatever odd reason. Some may be sounding great, some may be sounding phony, I don't really know. Could be 1 through 10 was renamed these tracks, I don't know. Okay, what we're doing is sorting to all. Same thing, going over here to Master Chain, turning off the limiter. Putting on the PC670 by Waves. Going down to the bottom, choosing a mastering glue. Going through our track list again, see halftime on track number 4 looks like. Uh, checking the rest of them. I know it's going to be on 17. Yep. So, <clears throat> with that being said, excuse me, kind of losing some vocals here. Uh, Skura, which I usually do use it for halftime. As we just saw in the last song, we figured out how to make it sound exactly the same. Go over here to Gross Beat, change it to Pitch Shifter. Negative five, I think it was. Let's see how it sounds. I must have chose six by myself. Sorry, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and save that as a preset so I won't have to be looking for it next time. Uh, uh, TW, I'll just call it halftime. Close. I'll just call it. Yeah, I just call it halftime, man. Don't even play with it. Halftime. And uh, I should say halftime quarter speed, but anyway, I'll get to the point. Matter of fact, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. Save. I'm going to go ahead and end the preset. The preset. Uh, halftime. One fourth speed. One dash four. Speed. Yeah, so anyway, I'm going to save that as that preset. It's already tracked out again, all the way up to the chorus, first chorus, so again, not much to do.
Yeah, not much to do to it. Export it. Turn to MP3. Go to favorite folders, 100 beats. Start the bounce down. That's number 78 we're riding. Six four bars right up on chorus. Strange, I only use I must have it mapped out. You've been probably seen this before. What is map sixteen? It is FL um excuse me, FPC. Excuse me one second. As I said previously in the other day. The only reason why I would use the FPC is because number one. I unplugged that. I showed you that before. I got a, a um, what is this thing? A machine, um, which I use, but not inside FL Studio for a couple of reasons. Um, but I use FPC to stack drums. Can get a good stacking pattern on these drums with inside of the FPC. So anyhow, sometime I'll use it here and then I'll mix it out to other channels there. So that's excuse me. That's why it's like that. So I'm go over here to same thing. I already got that doled out. So as you see, I'm using the L1, which I really use for waves, uh, wave files when I'm bouncing down. Post. I'm gonna turn. Halftime troubler on off. I had a true verb on there apparently for some odd reason. Um, yeah, I have some mastering things going on over there, so something was running into the halftime. So what was that? So track eight, which came from where? Something was running to track eight though. Hmm, I'm not really sure. It could be coming from inside of here. Let's see. It's on one, then I got this one on track one, which is showing up as two, which is showing up as three, four, and that's showing up as eight for some odd reason. That's also showing up today. So it could be these two here. So anyway, um, strong synth again. I think it's something like that. I think about like a Wyclef, somebody like that, you know. Uh, you hadn't heard from a while. Wyclef, where you at, man? So anyway, uh, let's see. This is pretty much tracked out. Only thing I would do is just widen the stereo. Instead of the L1, I'm going to use the Pug. And see if that makes a big difference. Of course, we can hear the difference already, so I'm gonna keep that instead of the L1 because I need that sound to sound bigger without doing a bunch of mixing. Again, let's see if we can throw the L1 on top of that, see if that sounds. Gonna have to keep that L1 on there because I got a control snare. A control snare. So uh, control snare is gonna be a problem in a mix if you don't control it. So I'm gonna keep the L1 on there and I'm gonna actually just turn it up. Mm -hmm. 
Also, see if I can turn it down because it sounds so squeezed. I need some life in that track, man. So anyway, I'm going to reset this track, make sure I get my levels back right. Matter of fact, don't even do that. Just simply turn the L1 back on, turn it back up.
Just like that that's the end of track huh, 79 and um, I feel great about that sometimes you can squeeze the track too much I tried to get all I could out of that track without you know squeezing the entire life out of it it's the way that the mix is set up remember when you're using your plugins um, the way you use them is going to get you what you got so learn how to use them a lot use them quite often and you'll find yourself um, in the mix that's all I can say um, we're gonna go ahead and use this time um, towards the end of this course we've been going for a while today it's been shorter than other days but we're gonna use this time to go ahead and do 80 81 and 82 if they're even filled in if not uh, we'll skip them and hit for the production course in a moment. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this and open up track 80 since this is the final um, the final few moments of this day. I'll put it like that. You see that? I didn't do that. It's notorious for a crash and so what I want to make sure because I was going to mention that just before it crashed. Yes, I was saving with an instantiation open. And in FL Studio, that's that's headed for trouble. And so anyway, I'm going to open it back up 79, close it out, save it, go over to 80. And that's what happened. I'm guessing that's what happened. Based on years of, you know, it happening that's what happened. I'm on track 80 now. Hmm. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> Help me. Oh, my. Oh, good. All right. Let me close this out. So track 80 should be open on your screen right now. I'm going to do the same thing. It's already highlighted. Um, we're not using halftime at all on this track. This track I recently made probably in about five, three to five minutes. Um, I was starting to play around with a new plug-in which is the SRX board, Jupiter board, and this beat maker dope machine. And I just opened it up and played with some stuff. And I sent it to a guy who was working on, um, working on, um, working on some stuff. I'll put it like that. He's not quite sure what he's working on. Um, we talked for a while over the phone. Said he was working on some old school meets new school type of I don't man I don't know but you know I, I heard overheard another producer saying that when they was listening to an AR a and R say make it sound like this make it sound like that make it sound like this and he didn't tell me that but when I made this track it came out immediately I thought about him and I sent it to him and he said yep it's dope but he's not recording so um, when you run into problems like that, don't consider it a problem. Just consider it a lesson. Um, now, see, I'm repurposing this track. I sent it to him via MP3. Just know, dude, if you see this video, that it's up for grabs. Anybody can have it by now. Um, and that was your one shot to get your stuff going. 
Um, so anyway, we want to go ahead and just show you what the track sounds like. I'm trying to see exactly what we have for him on the playlist. That was, yeah. So it's already tracked out one, two, three, four, five different kind of tracks. It just basically has the Jupiter 8 board and the SRX bass. And let's just see how it sounds. Okay, you can't tell me it's not hot. Alright? That's hot. And the guy said it sounds big. And I guess he was too scared for it because it sounds big. I don't know. I don't make sucker tracks. Um, you want that track? Link in the description down below. It's up for yours, up for grabs. If you make a million dollars on it, let me know. Uh, because my lawyer will be talking to you. But it's free of charge. And, um, yeah. That's strike 80. We're going to go ahead and bounce it down just like it is. I'm not going to track it out any further than that until you say that you want it. And then, you know, we can talk a little bit. But it's free in the description down below. Use it at your leisure. Just credit IMT Wilburn as a producer creator of it. Uh, yep. So while we're waiting, we're just going to have a sip, period. It's for the bougie people. Y'all don't know about that. <clears throat> so, um, that was a trash can. I didn't throw it on the floor. Or anything. <laughs> I got a trash can sitting right there. And it went in the trash can, you know. Let me show you. So you won't think this is a trash can, alright? And you just toss it on the floor like some kind of trailer park trash, right? So anyway, um, I already see by the Rhythm Composer 909. I have an 808 on my table, like a literal one. Um, this track, I'll put it down in my production notes. It's not made at all. As you can see, this is track number 81. <sighs> Let's just see how it sounds, though. Could be able to do something with it right now. Nothing on it. Just a loop.
I don't think this thing has a long... I'm going to just drag it out to an 8. Actually, I do hear a difference in it. I'm going to go ahead and track it all the way up. Now that could be due to, let me stop this, that could be due to the filter that I have on there, which probably it is, you know, because I just see it running from uh, 8 to 4, season 1 to 4, and it's flashing. I'm not really familiar with how to work the 909 as a board. I'm familiar with the sound, uh, but the 909 is due for house. I love house music. This was actually me starting a new house track. But I was kind of intimidated by the interface here because it came with so many presets and it's difficult to program because it's looking exactly like the board, which is notorious for being difficult to program. Uh, so anyhow, just like the 808, um, a real 808, I don't even mess with this thing. Hold up. Uh oh, my bad. I probably did it on purpose. Let me see how it sounds. Too much. Anyway, uh, I'm going to throw 808 on here right quick just to show you. I'm going to save this for actual the production um, TV 303 808. For those who never knew, this is the actual 808. It's the um, the VST version of the famous TR-808 by, made by Roland. This thing is notoriously difficult to program. I have one an, uh, actual hardware version right here sitting on my desk that I never use. I probably use it maybe twice, maybe three times, never in production. I wanted to buy it to uh, play around with some guitar, try to have a guitar. And so you can check out my Prince video I did with the guitar in my hand. So I, I was going to use it for like a beat machine. I thought it was going to be like <laughs> this big, maybe a little bit bigger. The thing is like this huge. It's literally like if that was on my table, it would be like this big. And it's really clunky, really, really difficult to program. And I'm like, hey, man, I don't like this thing. And so that was an immediate buyer remorse. And I heard, I heard Rick, Rick Rubin say that this thing was very difficult to program. I'm thinking, oh, it's back in the day or whatever. And I got the updated version. It's made by Behringer, mind you, but it's still the same uh, 808. It's not good, man. So don't waste your money buying this. And I wouldn't even advise using this. There's a better one uh, called the Sub Boom Bass. Besides, 808 today doesn't even sound like this thing. I'm going to try it out and see how it sounds. Come on, man. Don't, don't use that thing. If you use it, use it in your own fashion, but don't use that thing, man. And don't definitely don't buy one. If you got one still around, man, I don't know. 82. And we're done for day four. We will be rediscovering that house track in the production uh, videos, which will be coming soon. All right. So again, checking out what I'm making. Um, I like this sound. I thought it sounded kind of house. You know, like an update house. Um, we'll, we'll find out. It had like a house vibe. New base. House vibe. Old house vibe. Old house vibe. New base. So new house. New base. Old house vibe. That's the best way I can explain that. It looks like it's already pre-mixed. Pre Only thing I'm going to do is just go over here. Boom. Widen the thing up. I got my sampler here from the Serato. I know I definitely use Serato this time because I chopped up a Nate the Producer Beats 
vision. So I'm going to give you your credit, dude, uh, for this sample. Um, he's a YouTuber, but I just chopped up his sample, so I used elements from it. You know, push come to shove, you know, you would have to see each other's eternity about that. But I'm definitely going to use this as a placement. And, um, yeah, so let's just see how it sounds, and I'm going to bounce it down because I'm going to use it just like it is. So I'm gonna put that on a filter. This uh, this tam, not much of a filter. Matter of fact, I might not even put it on a filter. Just drop it in the background. You know, uh, turn the feedback down just a little bit more. Cut it off. I need to almost die. Very close. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the hook on top and the chorus on top. That was an accident, but I'm gonna keep it anyway. And so, um, yep, I'm gonna bounce that down exactly how it is. Uh, oops, because it being I have nothing in the front of the track. Right here, that was too. Open it up. Zoom in.
there's so much I want to do with that I'm not going to do it I'm just going to export it put it on mp3 100 beats wait for the artist that I know would love that song I'm not going to say her name um, see what she wants to do with it and then we'll go from there um, pretty much this completes day four of the digital masterclass uh, this is digital this is Terrence Wilburn excuse me for the digital media specialist masterclass I want to thank you for watching today's video um, I hope you enjoyed today's session where we discovered you know tracks <laughs> tracks 70 through 82 we shot through these in about two hour span um, share this video with someone you love someone you know who needs a little bit of encouragement the reason why I say that is because as a dig digital media specialist my uh, prayer for you is that you would discover your gift all of your God-given talents and to be able to share that uh, with the world at large now again I want to thank you for watching today's video stay tuned where in day five the final video we will be discovering um, the tail end of the 1 to 100 series we'll go through each of these tracks um, almost step by step already tracked out showing you exactly what you need to do to get your tracks to sound better this is the audio version of this course again um, yeah I feel complete other than that We'll check out some in the production courses, other things like these tracks I made for Frank Ocean. Um, but right now, we want to just say thank you for watching today's video. Again, stay tuned and make sure you subscribe for day five. Um, again, go ahead and watch day one, day two, day three. And again, discover what we discovered here in day four with tracks 70 through 82. Because in day five, our final uh, day, in the digital media specialist master course we will be discovering the last um, 20 or so tracks within the 1 to 100 series and you don't want to miss that share this link with someone you love share this video with someone you love make sure you like and subscribe and if you have any questions leave a comment below but i'll see you soon this has been terrence wilburn thank you for watching